But I've said that both Hillary and I were, were opposites in a sense. Uh, he was an extrovert with a capital E, and I, I enjoyed my privacy. And, um, but I really, because of martial law, our, there was a reversal of roles uh, since he was confined in his tiny, uh, tiny room and he had no access, of course, to the outside world. I had to be his spokesperson, his eyes and ears also. So I would report to him whatever um, his lawyers and his political associates would tell me. And because he had an ongoing trial, I would attend the meetings with his lawyers. And it was also very good education for me. They were teaching me all about, well, not only the laws, but telling me how impossible it was for us to win because Marcos could change the rules at any given moment. So in his case, because before he could solve almost any problem, and I also felt whatever problem I had, I could just bring to him, and he would find ways and means of addressing that problem, or the two of us could easily uh, look for solutions. But this time, both of us were, were powerless to do so. And so the two of us naturally had to turn to God. And uh, while um, I was prayerful before, I was not as fervently prayerful as I became, okay? Um, because before, what were my problems? Really, nothing and uh, very inconsequential compared to the enormous uh, problems that were brought to, our, to us because of martial law. Ninoy, in his case, um, he had written in his diary that, um, well, uh, I was a nominal Catholic and um, the only reason I would go to Mass every Sunday was to avoid a quarrel with Corey. So, uh, <laughs> because I had made it all, every Sunday, all of us go to church and we go to church together. So, uh, that's what he had written in his diary. But later on, um, he, he was just, he had all the time in the world. He became so prayerful and um, he, in fact, he would, he would ask me, so for it, uh, you pray the rosary every day? I said, yes, of course. How many do you pray in a day? And I said, well, three. At that time, there were only three major mysteries, unlike now there are four major mysteries. So uh, three, is that all? Is that, yeah, well, how many do you pray? And so he said, well, once, I think I prayed 50 rosaries. And I said, oh, well, you know, you don't do anything, you know, you're just here, so you have all the time in the world. But, um, I suppose all the prayers, and he was forever reading the Bible. Prior to that, I don't know, neither one of us really was uh, into Bible reading, but in prison, oh, he was just reading the Bible. In fact, one, I think my oldest daughter was telling me, you know, Mom, uh, for my first year in college, you put down the occupation of your father, so I put down senator. And then now, the way he talks to us about, I'm, I think I'll just say preacher, because uh, every time we visit him, he tells us about uh, what he has read, uh, not only in the Bible, but all these other religious books that he has, uh, he has read. So, we, we were saying that um, the years of his imprisonment were very difficult, but they were, uh, they gave us the greatest learning experiences. If we had not gone through those difficult times, oh yes, I guess I would go to Mass and I would pray, but there would not be that fervor or that intense uh, consciousness of really surrendering yourself to the Lord. So while, um, as I, I people say, I hope there will no longer be more sufferings, but um, I, I think that if one were not suffering, would one pray? Because uh, if things were going well, then you think, do I need the Lord? But when things look hopeless or you feel so helpless, then there's no other recourse. And I feel sorry for people who do not pray or who do not believe that there is a God. And um, I am grateful uh, to the Lord that um, he did not allow us to despair. In fact, 
he made us uh, better people. And as I, I was saying, I was glad that neither my husband nor I felt hopeless or helpless at the same time. It would have been tragic if both of us were feeling so low. And there would be times when I visit him and oh, he would say, "Oh, Corey, um, does anybody ever even remember me?" And uh, I think this. We might as well resign ourselves that this will be forever. And I said, no, no, Milo, of course not. And uh, I tell him that you know, I'm sure things will change. And whatever good news I could get, which was very few and far between, but I just tell him, look, uh, that this happened, that, that there will be days when I would feel really bad. And I say, oh, I wonder if this will ever end. And I say, no, just so it was good. God made, <laughs> I believe God made it possible for us not to be feeling low at the same time so that one would be able to comfort the other.